Hey guys, so I hope you all are doing well, right? So <clears throat> I want to bring a revelation. This is coming from Mark 9, and this is a very popular scripture. Is this it is a scripture where the disciples were unable to cast the demon out of the demon, the spirits out of this boy. And Jesus came up on the scene and he was able to do it. And and when he did it, his disciples were saying to him, like, yo, like, how were you able to cast out the demons and we weren't able to do it? And he said, this kind only come out through fasting and prayer. And when this, all right, so oftentimes when we hear that scripture, it's often preached and taught that, you know, the disciples were probably not fasting enough or they were not in a place of fasting enough to, to address this level of demons and, and so forth. And while that can or could have been true, I just want to offer a different revelation, a different insight that came to me from the Holy Spirit. And I do believe that when Jesus mentioned that, you know, this kind only come out through fasting and prayer, he wasn't just referring to the spirits that's on the boy. There was something else there that, need, that needed to be discerned and maybe their lack of fasting and prayer did not allow them to discern this thing, which ultimately resulted in them not having the authority to cast out the spirit. I don't believe that it was their lack of fasting and prayer. I don't entirely believe that it was only their lack of fast their, their, their lack of fasting and prayer was the only thing that prevented him prevented them from casting this spirit out of this boy. So so let's look at the scripture, right? Mark nine verse fourteen. Um I think I'm gonna read to verse twenty-nine. Um and when it came to, came and when he came to the disciple he saw a great multitude around them and scribes disputing with them. Immediately when they saw him all the people were greatly amazed and running to him greeted him and he asked the scribes what are you discussing with them then one of the crowd one of the crowd answered and said teacher i brought you i brought you my son who has a mute spirit and wherever it seizes him it throws him down he foams at the mouth gnashes his teeth and become rigid so I spoke to your disciples and I, that they should cast it out, but they could not. Then he answered him, which is he, Jesus, answered the scribe and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. So remember, Jesus responded to the scribe that was complaining. He didn't turn to his disciple and say, O oh, you faithless disciple. It wasn't the issue with the disciples' faith. It was an issue with the faith of the scribe, the father of the son. Um, he said, then they brought him to him. They brought the boy to Jesus. And when he saw him, he immediately, immediately the spirit convulsed him and fell on the ground and wallowed foaming out of the mouth. So he asked the father, so he is Jesus, right? So Jesus asked the father, how long has this been happening to him so see you can ask questions before doing deliverance um and the father said from childhood and often he has thrown him both into the fire and into water to destroy him but if you can do anything have compassion you hear what he said to jesus and this is what jesus said to him oh you faithless father are you faithless generation of people because you just know that this man lacked belief and how do we know that he lacked belief his speech his speech betrayed him he said but if you can do anything you're saying to jesus the messiah if you can do anything have compassion on us and help us jesus said to him if you can believe all things are possible to him who believe so remember earlier jesus called him faithless and then you were probably wondering, like, why would you just out of nowhere call this man faithless? He was simple, explaining to Jesus what happened. And what he said to Jesus was like, yo, I brought my son 
to your disciples and your disciples were not able to deliver my son from this spirit so one would have thought that jesus would have probably turned to his disciple and say hey y'all are faithless but you just call them man faithless that means that sometimes a deliverance cannot take place not because the deliverer doesn't have the faith and the authority but a person who's supposed to be receiving the deliverance does not have the faith and does not have the belief for it to be done so jesus discerned that and you can hear the keyword discern and i'm gonna come back to this again jesus discerned that this was an issue with his disciples but it was an issue with the father of the son that's why just call him faithless and then down down the line we see that you know in verse 22 he exposed that he had no faith by saying but if you can do anything help us and jesus counteracted him and said if you can is that if i can do anything is if you can believe because all things are possible to those who believe that means that your son was the possibility of your son being delivered was not was impossible because of the lack of your belief right and then immediately the father cried the father of the child cried out and said with tears lord i believe but help my unbelief so he now started to confess and say hey i do believe but there's a part of me that have unbelief and when jesus saw that the people came running together he rebuked the unclean spirit saying to it, you deaf and dumb spirit i command you to come out so notice that right after he said to jesus jesus i believe but help my unbelief jesus stopped having a conversation with him and then addressed the spirit so this man this father con confession of his unbelief needed to come forward so the miracle could take place so the deliverance could take place. Sometimes it's not the issue of the person who's doing the deliverance lacking the authority, but the person who's supposed to be receiving the deliverance lack the belief. So deliverance goes two ways. So if you're going for deliverance, you can't put all the pressure on the weight on the person who's doing the deliverance and on the Holy Spirit itself because it requires partnership. Your belief needs to be, your belief is currency. In deliverance you don't need to pay for deliverance all you need to have is belief that's the currency for your deliverance right and immediately when he said lord i believe i held my unbelief jesus did not even address him anymore he just addressed the spirit and then the spirit cried out compulsed him greatly and came out of the boy and he became as one dead so that many said he is dead but jesus took him by the hand and lift him up and he rose and when he had come into the house his disciple asked him privately why could we not cast it out so he said to them this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting and i don't believe when jesus well let me not say this because it could be a two-part revelation because remember you can have two revelation from one thing i believe that when jesus said that you know this this kind can only come out through prayer and fasting i i, I don't think he was only referring to the that oh you needed to fast and pray to have authority because no, they did nothing wrong he didn't say to them that they did nothing wrong it was the man's lack of faith so i believe what jesus was trying to say was that hey had you at fast and had you had prayed you'd have been able to discern that this father who you were trying to deliver his son had unbelief and before you could deal with the demon on the son you need to deal with the unbelief that's in the father and fasting and prayer would have leveled you up in the spiritual realm to be able to discern that this father did not have the belief and he did not have the faith and you first have to deal with the unbelief and the lack of faith before you can then address the spirit fasting and prayer increase your discernment yes excuse me your relationship with god increase your authority to cast out demons and stuff but a fasting and the reason why fasting and prayer is important for deliverance is not that it increases your authority it increases your ability to discern what you're dealing with the authority the exousia power to do deliverance comes from your relationship with god and your consecrated life right but the the, the 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 prayer and fasting what it does it increase your discernment to know what you're dealing with so but if they had had a level so when jesus said this part this 
kind only come out through fasting and prayer. He was saying that, you know, this kind only can, can come out if you were able to discern that there was unbelief and the lack of faith. And then you had to first address the unbelief and the lack of faith before you can then address the spirit. But how can you discern the unbelief and the lack of faith? You have to have a life of prayer and fasting because prayer and fasting is gym for the spirit, it's for the spirit man and it builds the muscle of the spirit man. And when the muscle of the spirit man is heightened and built, then your discernment is turned on. So what Jesus did differently from his disciples is that he dealt with the man's unbelief and when it and, and the man's lack of faith and it was after and only after the man confessed that he had unbelief and lack of faith then the deliverance was able to take place so i don't believe that it was jesus kind of, i don't believe that jesus was rebuking his disciple and saying to them that oh you didn't you weren't able to do this because you weren't fasting and praying i feel like what he's trying to say you know there's certain things that you need to address in the environment in the surrounding before deliverance can take place and the only way you can address certain things in the environment and the surrounding is if you're able to discern it and how can you discern and be your discernment being heightened if you're in a posture of fasting and praying. So that's the, re the revelation that I wanted to bring on about this. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. What is going on in your life? What What is it that you're waiting on God for that your unbelief is blocking it? A lot of times it's not that the man of God or the pastor or the apostle doesn't have the authority to bless you. And it's not that, you know, God don't want to bless you is your unbelief. Discern. Get to a place of fasting and prayer where you can discern what are the unbelief that are hindering the miracle that needs to take place in your life. God bless you.